So we're talking about uh, voter ID. Um, can you give me a history about uh, how the uh, the voter ID issue came to be on the ballot uh, in November? Um, was that uh, I understand that there was a vote last year that got vetoed by the governor. Tell me what the history is. Well, you know, his, history-wise, there's been a couple of attempts. Actually, um, Representative Emmer, who ran for governor last year, uh, actually I brought a bill up similar to the one that I brought up uh, a couple of terms ago and uh, sessions ago, and it tried to make it work. And, and I think this is a, a, an issue that has been building. So we felt with the majority now in both the House and the Senate that this was the right time in order to have hearings about uh, around uh, re requiring photo ID. So uh, I brought a bill forward uh, in the beginning of the session and Representative Kiffmeyer later but brought one about 30 days later. Um, different in that mine was, um, was, was simply a bill to add photo ID. Hers was a more comprehensive and used new technology like poll books to automate most of the uh, the uh, duties that the officials at the polling place use, but um, so at the very beginning of the year, in fact, of uh, 2011, uh, we began the process of of working it through committee and trying to pass that. Now, ultimately, what happened is we chose the the Kiffmeyer bill. The leadership did to go through. Um, it was more comprehensive in terms of the poll book and the technology and the like, uh, and that's what we laid before the governor at the end of uh, the, the first year or first session of the biennium and that's the bill that he vetoed right and um, you know given that and, and the amount in fact you know eighty percent of minnesotans believe that we should have photo id uh... we felt while we still had the opportunity with uh... both chambers both the house and the senate being in uh, public and control that we would just put the issue before the public and that's that's when we decided and mary would worked on it that would uh, we would do uh, an amendment to the Constitution, a bill to do that. And that passed off of uh, both floors, and since it is an amendment to the Constitution, it doesn't require that the governor sign it. Okay, very good. So, um, what is the language, basically, of uh, the amendment, and what would it do for the voters next time they vote? Well, the, it won't do anything uh, in, this, in this November's election other than being on the ballot to say, uh, actually, it's it's a it's just a question. Do you believe that we should have photo ID? And I, that's not the exact wording, but essentially, it's saying in the in ne in the next elections, uh, even off year that begin in 2013, uh, should Minnesota voters be required when they go to the polling place to have a photo ID? That's the question that will be on the ballot. Simple yes or yes or no, and then it will be in the Constitution after that as a requirement. Now. More than likely, there will be some uh, additional bills that will be required in order to flesh out the details or an acting or enabling language that, would, that we would work on in order to, to make sure that it, uh, uh, from a, a mechanics of, okay, what does this look like with um, you know, a provisional ballot in case you don't have it, uh, a photo ID on the day of election, what will that look like? And we'll pass bills in order to do enabling language to make sure that in 2013 then, will be able to implement the photo ID. Senator Nelson talked a little bit about the provision for a provisional ballot. Uh, can you explain what that is and how it would affect the voters that don't have ID when they, when they come to the poll? Correct. Um, well, first I, I, I want to make it, uh, emphasize the fact that um, you know, we have a lot of lead up. So my hope is that both Republicans and Democrats, you know, uh, this is a process we all need to get behind. We'll get out and actually try to make sure that people have photo IDs. But come 2013, uh, if a person shows up to the poll, they don't have a, a valid photo ID, uh, they'll be able to take a, a, a and fill out a provisional ballot and, and then be given a certain amount of time. I, the bill that I had is that they would be given up to seven days. And... Um, to come back with a valid ID in order to, to verify who they are and to validate that ballot. And so that's what the provisional ballot would do. Okay, very good. So, uh, bottom line, if you don't have a ballot, uh, or I'm sorry, if you don't have a uh, voter ID, you fill out the, the uh, provisional ballot, they set it aside in a special envelope that's sealed, and then they have time to come back and prove who they are with their ID. Uh, and then their ballot will be counted, correct? Exactly, okay. exactly. And in other states where they've enacted similar language, they have really had very, very few um, provisional ballots because they have been given, like we have done, uh, plenty of time, lead time, to make sure that people have uh, proper photo identification.
Sure. My understanding is this uh, uh, voting initiative would do away with the process of vouching. Correct. Is that correct? Can you explain what that is and what the problems were? Well, on, on uh, election day, a person could come in having not previously registered and register that day and be vouched for uh, by someone who also lives in their precinct. Now, there's only vouching in two other states, and we're the only state that allows for multiple vouching. It was, in fact, early 2000s that we eliminated um, unlimited, in some cases that still exist, but uh, the law now clearly states 15. So if you, could, you came in with a busload of people from you know, uh, different areas of your precinct, uh, and you could vouch for them for same-day registration. So uh, there's, a, there's a lot of problems with that, uh, m many cases of uh, more than anecdotal where people have said or have been challenged at the poll, well, you really know this person? Right. And uh, so there, there's been a lot of problems. And I think that kind of leads to uh, the reason why the advocates for photo ID uh, are, are so insistent that we need it. Right. It's because we, need, we do have broken election law that needs to be changed. Sure. Now, you talked about uh, voter fraud a little bit. Um, in the last election, uh, the news was that there, in some districts, there were more people voting that were actually registered to vote with no way to reconcile the difference. And the Secretary of State, uh, Mark Ritchie, has said repeatedly that there's no problem with voter fraud. Do you have any comments about that? Well, or? you know, first, first of all, um, because of previous actions from a previous Secretary of State uh, pushing, uh, you know, uh, Secretary Ritchie about some of these things. In 2008, our Minnesota elections, uh, we had over 38,000 new voters who were later flagged um, or challenged because the, the, the postal verification card that's sent out uh, was returned and uh, saying they weren't they didn't live there. Uh, there have been uh, over 400... Um, I'm sorry, what was that number again? 38,000, 38, right. Wow. And there's been over 400 suspected and ineligible uh, felons, of which uh, 90 of those have been convicted. Uh, there's 90, 90 that have been convicted. So there, there are numerous examples. But the one thing I would have to say is that voter fraud is one of those things that uh, is extremely hard to detect if you don't have any way in the beginning to validate or verify whoever's signing that roster or that role uh, is who they say they are. If you're not requiring them to say, I'm Mike Benson, uh, how, how do you know I'm not Mike Benson? Right. And, uh, you know, dead people on the rolls, many other things that could take place. And the other thing it is, uh, in my beliefs, at least, this is one of the most important things that we can do as citizens, but in terms of prosecuting 38,000 potential cases, it's extremely low on a county prosecutor's list of things that they're going to go after when you have you know, all the other crimes. So it's, it's extremely cost um, prohibitive to go after all the potential that might be. So... Uh, we're, we're not prosecuting nearly as many as we potentially could, and it's the other thing. It's just a very difficult thing to to uh, detect. Sure. I mean, there have been cases not just in Minnesota but around the country when they're un, when they're uh, found out uh, just how pervasive election stealing is. 